Welcome to the final installment of the Origami Beach Party brought to you by the Amherst Public Library. And now I'm going to teach you one of my very own original designs, a stingray that I just came up with last week. And I'm very proud of this model and I'm very excited to share it with you. And one note I will point out is that the idea behind this model came from a different origami model, a really cute mouse model that I love to fold that was designed by Masashi Tanaka. And I learned this mouse model last year. And every time I fold the tail of this mouse, I think, you know, this is a really neat uh, element that I, I could probably work into some different design. So that's how I came up with it. I started with the tail, I modified it a little bit uh, to change it from a shorter tail for the mouse to a longer tail for the stingray, and I just kind of took it from there. So here we go. One thing I should mention before we begin is that this model has been diagrammed by my good buddy Sarah Williams. Thank you, Sarah, for all of your help on these videos. Sarah is the one who created all of the title cards and other related content for this series. So thanks, Sarah. Okay, let's begin our stingray by folding a kite base. So flip the, if you're using paper that has a white side, you wanna turn the paper to the white side and we're going to fold one corner to the opposite corner. And if you folded the carp, banner in the last video you know that we're going to open up the paper and we're going to take two edges from the bottom into the center crease connecting at the corner over here and do the same with the other flap down here bringing that up to there Okay, now we're going to take the bottom point of the kite base up to the top point. And then we're going to unfold that step. Now we want to bisect the two angles at the bottom here. And when I say bisect, I mean fold in half. So watch closely what I do. I'm going to take this slanting edge into the middle line, but I'm only going to fold up to this crease. So we bring that edge up and line it up. And remember, we go from the point only up to the crease that's already in the paper. And in fact, you can even land a little short of that crease. You can go right up to it if you want, but it's not completely necessary. You see there, I've only gone up part of the paper. Let's do the same thing on this side here. Bring that edge to the middle, and I always kind of start at the tip of the corner and then kind of work my way up. And there you go. Whoop. Okay, let's flip this flap back up yeah, easy for me to say. And we are going to do some more angle bisectors. And what that means is we're going to fold each of these two angles in half. But we are only going to fold up to the creases made in the previous step. So here's what that's going to look like. If I turn the paper over on its side like this, I can take the bottom edge. Well, I don't mean the bottom edge, but I mean this slanted edge of that flap and bring it up to the vertical edge. So we're bisecting that angle, we're folding it in half, and we're only going to fold up to the existing crease. Unfold, you see that little crease line that we made right here? We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna spin it around so I can take the edge of the tail flap up to this creased edge, like so, line it up, but only fold up to the crease made in the previous step. And then we unfold all the way back to our kite base here. 
Okay, so now we've got those, those two creases we just made. Those are now mountain folds. These are valley folds. We need to make one more mountain fold. We're going to pinch in a crease that connects the intersections of these two sets of lines. And what's nice is that the paper will kind of know what to do. Here, I'm going to kind of get it started and gently pinch, but the paper will kind of easily find those intersections. So I do a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other, go back to the other side until I'm pretty sure they are connecting. And then I go ahead and pinch, but I'm only pinching in between those two intersections. And then I'm gonna set the paper back down. And now for a collapse. This is pretty cool how this all works. So if you kind of, kind of flip the flap up <laughs> like it was after we did that originally, and then you can kind of refold the most recent crease that we made, and it kind of makes a pleat. And what's so cool here is that we already have all the creases that we need to collapse the paper. We're going to close the flap along this existing valley crease. And when we do that, it's going to want to take some of the paper with it. But we've got this other crease already in the paper, so it's good to go. We're just going to flatten the whole thing. And there it is. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, kind of close this towards the middle. It's going to create a little triangle pocket, and voila! I love that step. And this is the tail of the Tanaka mouse, except for it's done a little differently in the mouse model, but it's the same idea. The remainder of the model is basically just shaping. I mean, we've got this kind of long skinny flap in the back, and we've got this kind of irregular pentagon on this side, and we just need to kind of fold some of the corners in, maybe do a little bit of shaping, and then we're done. So here's what we want to do. Let's flip the model over. And we can kind of, we can do some of these flaps in whatever order we want. Um, I'm gonna, um, let's start with the tip, because that's probably the easiest one. We're just gonna take the tip, and we're gonna fold it back, but not quite all the way to these corners but maybe about there. What's nice about these next steps is that you can kind of do them wherever you want and you'll get a slightly different result each time, which gives your model its own character. Okay, now I'm gonna put in the, these back corners, I think. So let's see here, I'm gonna take this back corner, this bottom corner here that I'm pointing at, and I'm gonna fold it up a little ways to make a triangle. And I'm not gonna let the crease touch this interior angle right here. And I'm not gonna let it touch this corner either. So when I fold that flap up, it might look something about like this. And again, notice that it doesn't quite go to the, that interior angle and it doesn't quite go to the point. And however far I do it on one side, I just want to try and make it about the same on the other. And it doesn't really matter if they're not perfectly the same. Okay, so those are the back corners. Now, we want to kind of truncate the corners at the top. Let me spin this around. It's probably because it's easier for me to put the creases in with the model like so. So this time, I'm going to try to connect with that point, and I'm going to land about here with the, with the other end of the crease. So this is what I mean. I'm going to pick this up, and I'm going to kind of push this corner in a little bit, but it's going to make a really long, skinny triangle that pretty much connects with that point. Now, it doesn't have to connect perfectly, but the key here is that we... We don't want to come in too far at the top because we want to leave us some paper to make the cool kind of curvy part at the front of the animal. So it's just a really thin triangle flap. And once again, let's just try to make it look the same on the other side. So just do the best you can and just take that little, just a little skinny flap and bring it up and 
just kind of eyeball it and just try to kind of balance it with what you did on the other side. And remember, you can always go back and adjust the folds in your model and shape to your liking. All right, so the last thing I like to do is just fold the very tips in. Now, this is optional because already, you know, that looks pretty cool, but I would rather not have like pointy tips here at what, what I think of as the wings. I don't know if that's what they actually call them. Of course, it's a stingray. But uh, here, so if you just take that tip, you just kind of blunt it, just fold it in a little bit. It doesn't matter how far you do that, but what that does, it just kind of creates a little bit more of a curved point as opposed to a pointy point. <laughs> and then all of the real folding is done, but now we can shape the model. And this is really fun. So first, the tail. This is probably the easiest part to shape. You can take the back of the tail and you're gonna pinch that together. Okay, and you're just going to pinch up to the body about to there. Now, I like to use a little bit of glue to close this flap up. So I'm just going to put a little dot of glue here. Don't need a lot. Maybe I'll just kind of spread it into that flap. You really don't need very much. And I'm going to close that up. Give it a good pinch. And then I'm going to put some clips on it while it dries. Now that my tail is dry, I'm going to shape the face of the stingray or the front of the stingray. It's not really the face, but whatever. Um, so here's a helpful way to do that. If you kind of indent this in just a little bit, you can make kind of a tiny little inside reverse fold just a little bit. And what's really cool is that you can take this inside reverse fold and if you run your fingernail along it, you can turn it into a bit of a curve. And you see how I just kind of keep running my finger along, turns that little in, tiny inside reverse fold into this really neat curve. And you kind of pinch the tips a little bit. Wow, I love that step, it looks so cool. And then finally, you know, especially because it's kind of the, the sides are wanting to point down, what I like to do is, whoop, <laughs> what I like to do is get a spray bottle and just very lightly, just give it a few light sprays. You don't need a lot. Now the water is optional. And if you do want to wet your paper, make sure you don't get it too wet. In fact, I might have even gotten mine a little too damp, but we're going to do some wet folding. How cool is that? I'm going to use, the, I'm going to use this marker to kind of wrap this into the paper around the marker a little bit. And I'm going to kind of do it a little bit on this side. I'm going to roll that up a little bit. And... I think I got mine a little too wet, but that's okay. It'll dry. And there you have it, the finished Stingray. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this Origami Beach Party video series. I've had an absolute blast putting this all together. Again, I want to give special thanks to Sarah Williams, who has worked with me on this really cool project. You can check me out here on YouTube. I would encourage you to like and subscribe to my channel. You can also go over to the Fold Space Origami Studio Facebook page to see some of my past live streams that I broadcast these last few months. Uh, I plan to do lots more here in the future, so like and subscribe and follow and all that jazz, and I will see you down the road. All right, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.